Hi, Jeff here on a hot summer's day. I'm with Sam, come into the picture, Sam. Here he is, Sam Parker Davis, budding star in permaculture. Look, just taught a PDC here at Zaytuna Farm. We're working together on the kitchen garden. We're gonna actually pull it apart and put it in the cover crop. There's not enough people here to maintain it. So like most annual gardens, it goes into chaos pretty easily. So we're reducing it down to one single bed on one side and the rest is gonna go into sort of moth balls, but fertility, very fertile moth balls because it's going into cover crop, which kind of means it's going into lay away. It'll sit there ready to be used when the crowds pick up here. Zaytuna Farms become an eco farm in Hamlet and eight shareholders, seven out of eight, because I'm already here, are kind of moving in and getting started. Sam's one of them, look. Um, he's got a lot to do. Everybody's got a lot to do. No one can look after the kitchen garden right now in these unusually new normal or not normally normal sort of times. Um, the visitors are unpredictable. So we're going to show you how we can take a garden apart and put it together with fertility in sort of suspension while the system just looks after itself. We get on with a few other things and we'll bring it back into abundance later on when the energy reappears. Stay with us, this is gonna be fun. Okay, day two in the kitchen garden makeover. And um, we've left one bed for vegetables because that's all we need. But we've got uh, two beds either side which get picked up by the sprinklers anyway. And we're gonna plant our uh, subtropical pineapples because they're one perennial that's gotten really well and we're extending them. So uh, stay with us, we've got uh, a bit to do and uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you an absolute transformation. So here we are. We've really turned it around now. We've got seed flying everywhere, as you can see, even on my hat. And um, we're cover cropping what was the perennial end of the garden that had gone out of control. We've knocked everything over. We've slashed everything. We've double ripped it in both directions. And now we're just gonna cover crop it. We're gonna put it in layaway. So it'll be in moth balls, but it will be actually in a condition where it's it's not losing fertility, you'll actually still gain fertility. We're gonna trim up our bananas here, and instead of a banana swale footpath here, we're gonna have a banana mulch swale. It won't be a footpath, it will just be a long banana swale full of mulch. So a lot of nutrient held up in there. We've got our four banana circles, we've got to trim those, and a lot of the waste from there, the organic material, it's going into the other banana swale mulch line or whatever we're gonna call it. Come this way and we'll show you what we've done over this side. So this is all going into cover crop and you'll see it happen. Let's show, show Sam because he's throwing seed everywhere. Sam's throwing cover crop. There we go, look at that, <laughs> action play, right? That over on this side, and we're shaping up our beds here that we've just ripped all the plants out. We've run the tractor through, we've reshaped it. And we're gonna cover crop these beds here, either side of our perennial pineapple transplant. So we have two rows of our perennial pineapples, subtropical pineapples, and one veggie bed with the sprinklers left in. All the other irrigation sprinklers are out because we're just gonna put it all into cover crop. There's not enough people here to garden all of this area. It's made to feed for 30 people, this garden. So we're just gonna cover it up with cover crop. It'll be in a really good condition. 
The soil here is absolutely full of life. A little bit of tractor work, a little bit of digging around and reshaping, it's not gonna do a thing to all this soil because this soil has been composted, cover crop, worm juice, compost teed. It's had lots of mulch and organic matter on it. it it's brimming with life, so it'll bounce back. But when we put the cover crop on, we we'll get lots of nitrogen fixation from the rhizobium bacteria. We've shaped up our bananas here. We prune them. The row on the other side's getting pruned. And these banana circles here, they're all getting maintained. We're gonna have a lot of banana stems. We've got a lot of pawpaw trunks. We put them all in the bottom swell trenches. So down here, come on down. We're gonna have a banana swell trench mulch pit. It's going to be like a long mulch pit full of chunky organic matter. It's going to all rot down and feed these bananas. This works like a banana circle, except there's a long line. So one on that side, one on this side, banana circle here, four banana circles there, two rows of pineapples, one row of veggies, and we've shut it all down until we get a little bit more action with our new shareholders. And we're going to show you how we do this. We're scattering the mulch over, it's, it's seed that we're just throwing out by hand. So it's the cover, cover crop seed we've thrown out and then we put a scatter mulch on it, a thin, thin layer of mulch, so thin that it just covers the soil. But if you give it a flick with your fingers, the soil's exposed. So that doesn't suppress germination because it's not thick enough, but it holds the moisture and, and, and it stops a lot of birds eating the seed and it allows the, the, the little bit of moisture held in that thin mulch to get the seed germinated and up it'll go. And you'll see the whole thing turn green. Sam's here doing a rough mulch um, and um, he's doing a rough rake to shape up the beds because we don't need it perfect. We're just cover crop in this area. We rake the pineapple beds quite well and we're gonna rework the veggie garden the one row with the sprinklers still in. So we'll take you through this. We'll throw, we'll put in different time lapses. We'll put in different still shots. We'll make it a little bit of a story. So stay with us. Okay, so we've had rain. And just a few days later, not even a week, we've got a green cover coming. The cow pea's gonna take over. I'm gonna show you what's, what it looks like, what's about to happen, and we're gonna keep recording. So you see the whole thing cover up. Here we go. Little bit of irrigation, but quite a lot of rain. And just in a few days, we've got germinating seed, especially where we've got scatter mulch. Look at it go. So I'm going to walk across it. I've got that much. It's not going to make a lot of difference. I'm not going to hurt it really. You can see it coming. It's germinating more in the sort of furrows of our deep ripping, but it's going to just, even in the rises, there's germination here and it's just going to take off and it's going to cover everything. It's going to ensure our crop. Um, we're still working on the gardens extra little bits and pieces and trimming up around to sort of tidy this system up. But you can see here where we shape the beds, there's a real thick germination coming. And it's quickly become, it's gonna become just a green living mulch. It's actually green manure. We haven't mulched the garden bed because we haven't covered it there because we're gonna actually put straw mulch on that. 
I'm going to tidy that up and make that one really diverse garden for the volunteers. We can see the pineapples. They're going to have a beautiful green manure cover. And as we go down, you can see the thickness of it starting. We've got our mulch banana swale at the bottom. We're still putting wood chip in there. But we, we're insured by the living system. We're insured by that green manure. So we can take our time now as we tidy up around the system and make this a very easy garden to care for. It'll be self-fertilizing and self-maintaining for at least six months. We'll keep you posted. Well, here we are a few days later and we're heading towards total cover. So we're dominating the space with the plants. They were originally just the seeds we threw out, the scatter mulch, and now the complete germination. And we're, we're gonna take over we're going to win the spatial race with the weeds. And that's what we want to do. That saves us a lot of work. And it's the most efficient way to get control. I'm going to take you through another little walk through the system. Um, you can see that we have cow pea dominance. There is a little bit of grass coming through. There's the dreaded nut grass coming through, but there's no chance it's going to survive in the amount of cover we've got here because the cowpea, each little cowpea can do oh, five to ten meters. There's a little bit of arrowroot coming through there. No problem. That's easy, easy mulch plant to have there. Comes out with a root division anyway if you want it out. So our rough end here is a little bit of sweet potato. No drama there. Our rough end has a lot more weeds, but it has a complete dominance of cowpea. All those little cowpeas are fixing nitrogen. They're all adding great organic matter to the soil. Now, actually, I can see, um, we may as well have a look. I can see that where we came through and cut the area, the asparagus has come back through. The asparagus has popped his head up. So there's a row of asparagus here where we could transplant the corms down into our kitchen garden. So we haven't lost much at all in our rough handling of this end. And over at the infrastructure end, closer to the education center and commercial kitchen, we've got a lovely control happening here because we, we actually dressed the beds a bit more. We made it a better germination condition. We still haven't worked up the one garden bed we've left. The pineapples look happy. This little guy stood his head up. There we go. So there, complete dominance with cowpea. Um, you can do this with any cover crop. You can dominate the event and win the spatial race with the weeds. Then you can relax for up to six months while it takes its position. And come autumn and the start of winter in this climate, it'll die out. And we can put in a winter cover crop if we want to go another six months. All the time increasing biomass, all the time increasing fertility in the soil because of the nitrogen fixing event. What a wonderful thing. Well, we've had constant rain. In fact, it's still raining and our cover cup's up. It's just covered. You can see a little bit of grass coming through, but it's not going to stand a chance because the cover crop's going to go over it. It's physically bigger, more vigorous, and each plant is quite long. So it'll completely smother this area. And our crop system at the other end, which has still got the form beds, that just looks picture perfect because you've got this even cover of green manure fixing nitrogen all the way over the beds, keeping it in a potential to go back into cropping anytime. Let me show you because this is a really good example of how you can use cover crop to actually hold fertility while you have control. Okay, just look at this. We've got total domination with cover crop, controlled by rampancy. 
It's kind of like my herbicide, it's my standby. If in doubt, cover crop. Don't have any bare ground, cover crop. Spoil the soil with the interaction with a beneficial cover crop. All those little roots are interacting with microorganisms in the soil, harvesting all kinds of beneficial elements, particularly nitrogen, and acting like a living biological fertilizer.